Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to add a label right above these buttons. So I'm gonna type in label over here because I'm too lazy to search for it and drag it anywhere up here. And you can leave the text label by default, but I'm just gonna double click it and hit like default text. Now again, what's gonna happen is whenever we click one of these buttons, we are going to, through the code, change the text on this, but the first time it pops up, we'll just have the default text so it'll display that, just so the user knows where it is. And now what we need to do is we need to form a connection between this text and this file right here, because remember, in this method, we're gonna say, okay, change the text of this item, so unless we can reference it somehow, um, you know, this is kinda gonna be lost, because right now, they are kind of disconnected because even though that these are hooked up through actions, it can't reference it anyway right now. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, let me click this, hold down control, drag, and release, and I'll just choose action because, you know, a connection is a connection, right? Well, huh, action isn't right there. And the reason for that is because, remember, I said that the action resembles pretty much just think of it like this, an action that the user can do, something that the user can do to your screen. However, this is just a static text label. It wasn't meant for tapping or swiping or anything like that. It's just an item that appears on your, on your screen. So the type of connection that we need is an outlet. Now outlet is pretty much just a reference to this item. And once we have a reference to it inside our code, we can do things like change the text. But again, an outlet is just a reference to an item. An action is some method that the user calls whenever they interact with something interactive like a button. And if you guys kind of get confused by now, um, don't worry, in like two tutorials, it will just be like second nature. So now, what is the object name or the variable name that you want to refer to this? And I'll just say like a Bucky's label. And of course, everything else is good. Hit connect, and it makes that object right like that. Now, just real quick, let me explain what all these stupid keywords mean because a lot of these are specific to Swift. Again, anytime you have an outlet or just a static reference to some item, you use IB outlet. That means interface builder outlet. Weak says that, again, what I'm gonna do, and what I decided to do a couple of tutorials ago, is instead of teaching guys the entire Swift language, and then going on in the same tutorial series and showing you guys iOS development, I'm gonna teach Swift in an entirely new tutorial series because it's probably gonna take like 50 videos to like get really good at it. But for right now, if you're familiar with any other programming language, or if you're coming from Objective-C, I'll talk you guys through the weird things Again, I'm assuming that you guys already like know what a class is and what an import statement does, but just the little nuances of Swift, I'll talk you guys through. So weak, again, this is like the two second tutorial. It pretty much says that we can break this connection to the button whenever we don't need it anymore. So, you know, that's that. And this explanation mark at the end, you guys probably noticed that, all right, that's kind of weird. I didn't see that in any other programming language. That just says that this object, it has some value. So it's not nil. So whenever we run this code and build it later on, we're saying, hey, compiler, you don't have to check if this is empty or it's um, you know, nil or anything because it just saves you a little bit of time. So I know they're kind of weird syntax, but you know, that's that. Now, another thing I want to point out if you're new to Swift is whenever you're writing Swift, you don't need semicolons at the end of your statements. So it's kind of like Python if you're familiar with that. So if you see me leaving out semicolons, um, I'm doing it on purpose. You don't need them and they're recommended to not have. However, this is kind of the weird thing. You can have them if you want. So <laughs> it's uh, optional, but um, in the just so I can keep up with standard programming practice, I'm not gonna include them. All right, so now that I got all that taken care of, 
This, of course, is the entire class that controls it. This is a reference to this text element, to this label, and this is the method that gets called whenever we click one of these buttons. So what I'm actually going to do is this. We see that we have this parameter passed in on this method called sender. Now, this is pretty much passing in a button that called the action. So the sender is the object that called or kicked off this method. So whenever we click bacon, the sender is going to be bacon. And whenever we click tuna, the sender is going to be tuna. Now, just to make this tutorial pretty cool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the text, either bacon or tuna, and I'll change the text to dependent on what button we click. So that'll be a little bit more interesting. So let me just add a comment so you guys don't forget. I'll say the sender is the object that called this method, which will be a button. So what I'm going to do is I first need to store that text, which will be the title, either bacon or tuna in a variable. So I'm going to hit let title and I'll talk you guys through the Swift syntax in just a second. Sender, which will be that button title for state just going to hit tab title for state and in here I'm going to write dot normal all right so first of all let me mention this whenever you make variables in swift what you do is you use the keyword var to declare it and then you can write something like uh bucky equals 22 and later on if you ever want to change it, you can set Bucky equal to something like two, whatever. That's variables for you. We already know that. Now, why did I use let right here? What let means is it's a constant. So in Swift, you use var for variables, or in other words, values that you can change. And let means a constant. So if you ever try to do something like this, let Bucky equal 22 and then you change it later on It's saying, uh, uh, you told me this value was constant, meaning you're not going to change it. So why did I use let right here? Well, this title, we're not going to change the text on this. So it's better to use a constant for that. All right, pretty cool. So now the only other thing that we have to do. Oh, I probably should mention this title for state normal. Believe it or not, there are different titles that you can have on different states. So the states of your button include like regular, which is normal, which it is right now. Um, you can also have whenever the button's like held down, that's a different state. So I know it's kind of confusing that there you can have like different titles on the same button, but that's what that is. This pretty much mean when the button's normal, which is always going to be in this example, just get the title of it and then store that title which is a string in the constant title. All right, so that was a lot of explaining for you know a couple lines of code, but now you guys understand. So now what I wanna do is just one more line of code to change the text on this label. So the first thing we have to do is reference it, Bucky's label, and the property is text, simple enough. So now I'm just going to write something like you clicked the title button. Now what we're doing right here is we're just interpolating title, sticking it in right there. So it says eventually if we click bacon, it's going to say you clicked the bacon button. And if we click tuna, it's going to say you clicked the tuna button. Pretty sweet. looks like everything should work good right now so let me go ahead and change this to iphone 5 and run this bad boy all right open up your stimulator and i'm gonna click bacon you click and the reason that it's doing this is because i need to resize this so we have enough room and let me make sure that we definitely have enough room 
All right, so that looks good. And another thing that I wanna mention is this. Whenever you just wanna stop this, it kind of resembles just stopping this app. You can click the stop button and it just stops it. In other words, exits out of it. Or if you wanna get rid of it, you can just close iOS simulator, quit iOS simulator. It kind of achieves, achieves the same thing. So now let me run this again. and Hopefully we will have enough room all right, so I'm going to click bacon. You click the bacon button, tuna. You click the tuna button, bacon, tuna, tuna, bacon, bacon, tuna, tuna, bacon, bacon, bacon. Er day, doing this a hundred times. Love my bacon tuna app. Uh -uh. All right, so that is the basics of interacting with the user. Again, there's a lot more to cover, but that was probably... To be honest, the hardest tutorial is just getting in, getting our feet wet. And another thing I wanna mention is this. If you guys want any of the source code, not only from this tutorial, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the source code from all of my tutorials and I'm gonna be putting it on my forum. So some people just like to sit back and watch the videos and then just go get the source code. Some people like to type and follow along. Either way, it's all going to be there for you for free. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.